Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to LinkedIn Tuesdays. We're very glad you're with us. It's January 26th, uh, 2021. We're glad you're with us. We've got a great speaker today coming up in just a couple minutes. Uh, for those people on Zoom, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please just enter into the chat box. For those uh, people watching on uh, Facebook right now, please enter your questions into the comment field. I am monitoring the feed and I'll be sure to get those questions uh, asked as the speaker takes a break. For those people on Zoom, if you're using a PC or a Mac, we ask that you use the speaker view, which is what's in the lower left-hand corner. Where you see that red arrow, you can grab that white line and you can slide that back and forth to make the speaker bigger or smaller or change the ratio between the uh, speaker and the, uh, present the PowerPoint presentation. Please note this event is being recorded. It's currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career FW Facebook page and on the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, and if you post a comment in the chat box or have your microphone or camera on, you give consent for your comment, name, and picture to appear. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. I founded a Career DFW back in 2008 to help the unemployed in the DFW area. In 2012, I started CareerUSA.org to help people outside the Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, I've written a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search That You May Not Know. It's available on Amazon for 15 bucks a piece, or if you want to drive by my house, hard to do for those people in Chicago or Phoenix. But uh, if you live in the DFW area, you want to drive by, if you want to throw $10 out your window, I'll throw a book in your window if you drive real slow. Uh, since 2007, I've been facilitating and leading the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group, and I've been a member of the practice interview team since 2017. Well, we have four outstanding speakers who talk about LinkedIn on a, uh, they rotate through every month. Locke Alderson, Terry Sullivan, Ruth Lipsky, and Kurt Bonamater. And the reason I've got four different speakers talking about this is because everybody talks about LinkedIn from a little bit different angle and a little different perspective. And hopefully you'll learn something by watching each of them coming back and watching again. And I know that when Locke and Terry and Ruth do their presentation and Kurt, I mean, they're always changing up what they talk about, what they focus on. So it's something new every week and hopefully you'll come back and join us. So today, uh, our speaker is Kurt Bonamater. He's an executive recruiter at Link Executive Search. Uh, he's gonna talk about LinkedIn from a recruiter's eye. So uh, Kurt, thank you for being with us and it's all yours. Outstanding. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna open up uh, and share a screen with everybody. Welcome today, appreciate you being here. Um, and uh, what, uh, what <clears throat> don't, don't much pay attention to what you see on the screen right now. What I wanna talk about is just a couple of things that are really relevant to, uh, to this group. So uh, Jeff, thanks for having me and um, everybody else. I hope that you can get a tidbit out of what, you know, what we're here to talk about. This meeting is really for you all. So if you've got questions, I encourage you to send a note to, to Jeff, he kind of moderates and helps me out while I'm presenting. But if you've got a question, we wanna make sure that we get to your questions because that's more important than anything else I have to say is making sure that you go away with a, a tidbit of data. So let's start off by just saying that what we're gonna look at today is we're gonna look at LinkedIn Recruiter. Not many of you have had the opportunity to use this product or have the opportunity to even get a, a glance at it. And it's not that it's that magical, but what I want to do today is in the next 45 minutes so, or so is share with you a glimpse of what I look at or what recruiters look at. Now, I didn't write the book on recruiting and using LinkedIn, so I'm not going to suggest that there's a lot of other things that recruiters do and can do and use that I don't use. But I hope that what I can do is just shed some light on what we look at, how important this LinkedIn profile is how important it is that you take the time to um, put your best foot forward because this is going to be the most, this is going to be the first point of contact that most of you have with your next employer. Uh, whether that's a recruiter, an internal recruiter, an external recruiter, or just a hiring manager that's doing the work on his own. Okay, so some real key basics with LinkedIn are that one, um, we want to make sure that 
your contact information is in your LinkedIn summary. In the summary section, if you don't have that in your summary section today, I encourage you to do that. And I'll show you why in a little bit. It'll become really obvious why that is important and why it's a differentiator. Not just important, why, you know, it doesn't make it easier, but it is a differentiator, okay? Um, secondly, I want you to think about this product. LinkedIn developed this a number of years ago. And somebody on a call earlier today um, kind of informed me or educated me on something that I wasn't aware of, that Corn Ferry was instrumental in helping them develop the LinkedIn recruiter product. Um, and they always thought that, man, you know, somebody's going to come in and, and, and LinkedIn's likely to do that and kind of end the recruiting business as we know it at Corn Ferry today. But what I want to refresh you is, is that it hasn't changed Corn Ferry is still there. They're very successful as are many other recruiting firms. But the bottom line is, is that we all use this product called LinkedIn Recruiter. And when we're using LinkedIn Recruiter, what they did is they built LinkedIn Recruiter on, with a separate set of APIs. So it sits on top of LinkedIn. So you've got LinkedIn Recruiter up here, you've got LinkedIn down here, and then you've got all the forks that go into the database. But the important thing to note is, is that when I am using LinkedIn Recruiter, when I'm in the product and looking at candidates, you as a candidate cannot see me. That's one of the first questions that candidates ask me. No, no, I can see you. Well, you will see recruiters pop up that have looked at your profile, but they are not using the LinkedIn Recruiter product because I have the ability, and I, I can show you here today, where I can look at 100 profiles in an hour. And so if everybody that I looked at had the ability to then reach back to me and say, hey, Kurt, I understand you looked at my profile last week or yesterday. I'd like to talk to you about what you're looking at. I'd never get anything done and therefore I probably wouldn't be a recruiter. So we are invisible to you as candidates. We're invisible to you. Um, but at the same time, let me just give you a glimpse behind the, the, uh, the curtain. Um, to show you a little bit about what the LinkedIn product looks like. So this is this is a, a screen. I can go back um, and uh, <clears throat> got this is my LinkedIn profile. And then I've got a recruiter tab that I can go to. I come over to my recruiter tab and my first screen gives me a glimpse at projects that I'm working at, jobs that I might have posted, any reporting. These are recent uh, jobs and stuff that I, I was working on. I have the ability to do this advanced filters, but I'm going to get there quickly by going into history and going to this search because I did this earlier and, and I think it's, it's, it's fairly demonstrative of what we want to look at. So I have the ability, as you can see here on the left side, I have the ability to look and search for a lot of different things. I can even go to advanced search and pull up even more things as far as experience and recruiting and activity and, and languages and so forth and so on. Okay, so I have a lot of things that as a recruiter I can look for. But one of the first things that we consider as a, as a recruiter looking at is we go to this thing called most like or more likely to engage. It's in the spotlights section. Okay. So spotlights gives me a couple of categories. One is this tab that says that these candidates have self-selected that they are open to work. Most of you have already selected that. You've got two options when you do that. You can put a, um, uh, I call it a wreath around your neck, a green wreath that demonstrates visually that you're looking for a new job. And that's a, a visual to recruiters and other people. Or you can turn that off and you can be still open to work, but you don't have that, uh, that, uh, that wreath around your head. But that is really important for you as a candidate to check that box because as a recruiter, we're looking to try to engage with candidates as quickly as we can. And we're trying to start, we generally start, again, I, I don't know that every organization follows this practice, but you wanna start, we wanna start the funnel as big as we can. We wanna start as big as we can. And so we're not trying to exclude people, but at the same time, we wanna to try to engage with people that are willing to or wanna have a conversation. 
Then there's this tab that says more likely to reply, okay? Are more likely to respond. LinkedIn, if you don't know this, tracks you as a candidate. They track you, they track me. And they track to see whether or not I am replying to messages or not. And so if you wanna be in that bucket that tells recruiters that this is a candidate, that if you send them a message, this candidate is more likely to reply to your message than other candidates, then make sure that you reply to every message that you get in LinkedIn. You can't fix the past, but I encourage you to just go forward. That can just be a thanks, I'm not interested, I'd like to learn more, um, I'll pass it on to my network. You don't have to write them a three paragraph note about why you're not interested in being a, um, a uh, broom salesman that pushes a cart through the neighborhood. Um, that, that's acceptable. Somebody might want that job, but you don't have to tell them why, just no thanks, I'm not interested. So just make sure you're replying to every message that people send you in LinkedIn. The others are pretty self-explanatory, past applicants, um, or we have a, co a connection somewhere. So I'm not interested in that. I'm really just trying to generate and talk to new people. So open to work, more likely to respond. In this case, I'm looking for in the locations of Detroit, Toledo, the Lansing area, Flint, all those areas are generally in the metropolitan area of Detroit. They're within an hour, an hour and a half drive. Um, I'm, I'm looking for, um, meant to put that in there. I'm looking for a marketing, um, let's put in a marketing director, okay? Now you can see my funnel starts to, to get a little bit smaller, okay? So these are people that now have they're open to work. They're more likely to reply. They have mark. They have been a marketing director. They have that title in their background somewhere. And because I'm trying to build a big funnel, what I might do is I can go in there and check whether they're current or past. And I'm interested in current or past. But I'm going to go ahead and, and click on a couple more titles in here that are product marketing coordinator that are similar to a regional brand manager. I'm trying to get that network a little bigger. It's only going up to 79. Um, so it, I'm not looking for a senior global territory sales manager, vice president. So we got 79 people in our funnel. Not, you know, not a huge search for this particular job that I'm looking for. And this is just a made up search. But I've got the territory. I'm looking for people that have got product innovation and strategic thinking. Now, those are things that I can continue to select because they provide them to me. But there's another place here at the bottom where I can put in keywords or I can build a bullion. So if I've listened to my client and I hear that they're looking for, you know, these five different things that are not necessarily on the job brief, but these are things that they want this candidate to do, then I may put that into a bullion or I may put these into keywords. This is where when you get advice from people that tell you that you need to make sure that your LinkedIn profile is full of keywords, this is why, okay? I'm gonna pause for just a second. Does anybody have any questions? So far, nobody's entered anything. So. Okay, well, and I'm not watching the number of participants. We're at about 83, Jeff, so I'll watch that. If it starts to dramatically decline, then I'll stop and ask questions. <laughs> So this is an all-time high. We've never had 83 people on a LinkedIn Tuesday. So thank you. And we have 10 more people on Facebook. Well, that's awesome. That, that's an attribute to you, Jeff. And, and I mean that. I mean, folks, I hope you remember Jeff in so many different ways, not just, uh, you know, to buy his book, but spiritually. I mean, this is a guy that puts himself out there every day to help people like you and I and and other people. So Jeff, this, this is... Uh, my next mass is to you, my friend. Thank you. Um, okay, so back to LinkedIn. So, so you can see how I can then quickly put in a lot of different things. One of the things that candidates always want to hear about is this graduation. Um, and so I have the ability, if I want to, to change it, modify it, at, you know, slide it around, change the dates, and so forth. Uh, but I don't think that it's appropriate for this demonstration because we only have about 79 people in there. The question though that comes up, it came up this morning and I'll use it, I'll give this example again because I think it's a good one. 
Um, and if anybody else has got any other suggestions, I'm, I'm Jeff, you might have an opinion on this as well, but they asked whether or not, you, you know, it's okay to not put in your college graduation day. Okay. And the question is, if you don't put in your college graduation day, will you not show up? Because I've explicitly said that I want only people that have graduated from 93 to 17. And the answer to that is no, you will fall. You, I will still have access to you. You'll be there, but I will never be able to see your date of graduation. My point is, is if you're trying to hide something, we will find out if we, if it's important to us, because we're trying to plug in numbers based on the years of experience the company's looking for, or they want somebody to be there for the next 20 years. And we've got to mathematically try to figure out when you graduated from college so we can try to figure out how old you are. We can do that pretty easily. So I don't have an opinion about putting that date in there or not, but it doesn't hurt you if you don't put your graduation date. Jeff, do you, if you had the same conversation, do you have anything to, to add to that? You know, I, if, if you don't, let's say, if you put in your grad, if you don't put in your graduation date, they're going to either see you on a video interview, they're going to see your picture you have on LinkedIn. Exactly. Current, and they're going to figure it out. So don't hide it. I mean, if it's you're, not worth it. It's not worth it. It, it. You're trying to hide something. You're never going to hide it. I mean, it's, I had a buddy of mine that um, that is, is a good friend of mine. You could say anything. I could say anything to him. He was that kind of friend. And I met him for coffee one day and he showed up and he was, he had dark hair. And I was like, George, what, what did you do? I said, who are you trying to kid? <laughs> and, you, and I said, you look great. But, you know, if you're trying to hide that gray hair, it, it just, it's never going to work, buddy. It, it is what it is. You are what you are. You are as old as you are. So a little humor to the situation, but um, that's my general feeling. And, I, and Jeff, I agree with it. Don't try to hide it. If I was looking in particular industries, I could then select those industries or I could put other words in there. Use, I can use as keywords. If I know somebody's, if let's just say I um, was at an event recently in, in Detroit and I met somebody and I had their first name, but I don't have their last name. And I, I kind of know the industry they worked in. I have the tools to get pretty close to finding that person. Um, if they're an executive and they're in LinkedIn and, and, and they're, you know, they're working, I will generally be able to find anybody in LinkedIn. So now let's go back to just hitting send and or search here. So we've got about 79 people. I hit search. And I'm just going to show you now in this particular search, I want to add that I didn't put it in there, but my client also would like for this executive to have their MBA. Okay. So I only have 82 people to look at. Not a lot. I can look at those 82. We could look at 82 people in the next 30 minutes on this call. I mean, that's how quickly I can look at the, the candidates. So I'm looking for candidates that have got brand management. I'm looking for people that have got X number of years. I can look in here and see all of her work experience. This particular candidate started working in 1996. That's about right. She went to school and got her BA in 94. So there's a couple of years missing there, but I'm confident that that was filled with something positive. Um, I can click on her profile directly. I can more easily see exactly where she's been at. If I don't know a company, for instance, I don't know who Campbell Ewald is, I can go directly to their um, LinkedIn page and see that they're a full service integrated marketing communications agency. Okay. So she's worked on the agency side. Close that. Close this. I see that she's also worked Zenith. So she's a technology person. I'm just going through this like really quick. I was looking for strategic thinking so you can see where that's highlighted in her profile, okay? Product innovation, an example again. I have more if I want to. I can look at other experiences, volunteers that she does. But this generally, I can buzz through this literally in about eight to 10 seconds. Now, this is a candidate that has indicated that, um, Let's see here. She is open to work, okay? 
She's given me a lot of keywords. That's really, this is where those keywords pop, okay? If I had put in other keywords, social media, marketing analytics, and so forth, that I'd put those, they would have all been highlighted in here. But she's actively potentially looking for a job, but she doesn't give me her phone contact information, okay? What did I say earlier? Giving me your contact information in your summary section is a game changer. I want to talk to Tammy, but now I have to go to resulting to looking or using a, um, an in-mail. I can select a template. I write templates so that it's really easy. Click on that. It's a note. I have to change one or two words in it generally. I can attach the job brief and I send it out. And then I can save her to a project. So those of you that have been involved with HR and, and maybe in your company in the past and they had an applicant tracking system, a, a, our, uh, in, uh, LinkedIn is, is to some degree providing a, a mini applicant tracking system. So I have the ability to track candidates, put them into a project, manage the communications with those people, send messages, big messages out. If I've got 100 people in the project and only 10 have replied, I can send a blanket email out to 90 new people that are those 90 that says, hey, I know you're really busy, but if you've got a minute, I'd love to connect new opportunity and bump up. And I just give them a short little tidbit to hopefully they say, yeah, I'd like to learn more, okay? Because that's all I'm trying to do is create conversations. And this is the tool that gets recruiters to that point, okay? So great profile, not a lot about what she's done recently, but she's only been there six months, okay? So I don't know why she's actively looking, but you know it wouldn't be uncommon that she you know, took an opportunity and through COVID, it's just not working out the way she wanted to. So we're not gonna judge her, but we wanna have a conversation with her. So I quickly go back and I go, Kevin, boom, boom. He's got a master's. He lives in Macomb. That's close to where my office is. He's an, he's an automobile guy, okay? I can see real quickly he's an automobile guy, um, but that's okay because this is an insurance company that I'm working for, and I'm looking for just a really solid product marketing guy, so, gal, so I'm really not concerned about the fact that he's only worked in automotive, okay? Again, I'm trying to create conversations. He was in the National Guard for a long time. That speaks highly of, you know, that he, he, he's sustainable. He's got his um, master's degree from Walsh College. I don't know it well, but I grew up in Michigan, so I know a little bit about it. Again, I want to talk to this guy. He's got virtually nothing. Well, there's, there's his summary right there. So very little of a summary. He is open to work, um, but he hasn't given us any information, not a lot of information. Um, and so he would then, you know, be a candidate again that I've got to go to sending it in in mail and hoping that he's a candidate that will reply to me. Okay. And that's all we can do is just hope that you guys reply to us when we send those messages. Um, Barry doesn't have a, a, a master's degree. Um, here we go. Julie does. Boom. Click on Julie. I'm trying to find somebody that has got given us their contact and information. She hasn't either, but she's open to work. Um, so <clears throat> now I can also see three connections. These are people that we're mutually connected to. I don't recognize any of those names right off the top of my head, but I've got like 10,000 contacts. So it doesn't surprise me that I don't, but I'll click on it to see since I don't have her contact information and I'm going to go on the gut that she's going to be interested in replying to me, I'll send her an email. But this is where recruiters are responsible for sending really exciting, not provocative, but enhanced um, uh, notes to you as a candidate that gets you to want to have a conversation with me and not send that reply back that says, no, thanks, I'm not interested. So questions now. You've seen a little bit more of the product and how I use it. Yeah, all of a sudden we got a whole bunch of them popped up here. Uh, do you want to define what a Boolean is? Yeah, Boolean... A Boolean is a, a search term that is, um, it, it's similar to if back in my Fortran days. So it's, I'm looking for a marketing and, and I put and in capitals, director, not um, manager, 
And, and so I can build, take all these key words and put them into a Boolean string that says, and, and not, and this and that, and equals, and it gives it's, and normally you wouldn't do it in LinkedIn because LinkedIn gives me so many tools, but I can take that Boolean string and throw it into Google or into um, some of the new search engines. And I'll find people, their bios, I'll find a speaking bio, I'll find uh, an article that was written about them in the Dallas Business News. And eventually I'll get to their LinkedIn profile, but it's a new way for, it's, a, it's an old way for recruiters to just try to find you as candidates out there other than just using the standard tools of LinkedIn. Right, uh, Susan asked, is there a cap on skills? No. Well, in the skills section, you can only list 50 skills, but beside putting them there and having them in your profile, you Correct. also want some of them in your about us section. Your exactly. Section. So if you're talking about the skills that a candidate's got in the bottom, is there, yeah, there is a number of the number of skills that you can put into this section here, here okay? Um, as a recruiter though, I don't use it for all jobs. Here's where I did use it. Any of you that are in manufacturing, I recently did a manufacturing director for a company that was looking for somebody that had CNC lathe experience. Um, they had to um, have metals experience. And so that is a category. When I look, when I was searching for those candidates, because they were really hard to find, um, this skills and, and section really helped in finding and identifying those candidates that had those strengths. So if you're not using that section, I do encourage you to, 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 to uh, go in and fill that out for yourself. Okay, DB asks, uh, where are the keywords best located within your profile? DB, Everywhere. My, <laughs> yeah, DB, my, my dear friend, DB, DB, I'm so glad you're here today. Um, DB, for those of you that are on the call that might need help with a resume or a LinkedIn profile, I've known DB for a long time. She is an amazing um, person, but in addition to that, she has amazing skills to help candidates translate and, and build the, that, that word, those key words into your LinkedIn profile and your resume that, that are really differentiators. Um, so if, if you want that contact information, Jeff's got it now. I introduced them recently, and certainly you can reach out to me, and I'd ha be happy to introduce you. But, DB, the, the answer to that is everywhere. Um, you know, keywords, keywords just can pop up in so many different places. I thought it was a brilliant example of what we looked at earlier, where um, – the, uh, the first, I think the first gal that we looked at up here had put in, inserted all those key words at the bottom of her summary. Um, this whole section there, the core competencies. Um, before, uh, before LinkedIn used to track the number of words, what we used to do is recommend to candidates if they didn't want to use keywords like this is to, to create your profile in a Word document, copy and paste it over. But at the bottom of that document, put a hundred key words, but put them in white. So nobody can see them. Just put them in white. Um, but LinkedIn picks up those white words now. So um, this is another good way to do it. If uh, you know, again, I, I'm not I'm not critiquing this young lady's profile, good or bad. But um, you know, she's again, she didn't post her resume in here, so you can see where she's got a reputation for, and she's used a lot of key words there. She, uh, she helps her clients. So it's, it's not a bad profile, but back to DB's question, keywords everywhere. Uh, I think, you know, Ruth Lipsky, who's our speaker next week, in fact, she's on the call right now watching and seeing what Kurt's talking about. Uh, she uh, says rule of thumb is three to five times. You want those keywords in the profile three to five times. So make sure it's in your skills, make sure it's in a couple of your jobs that you've done and make sure it's in your about us section. Cause you can see when Kurt's looking through the profile, they're highlighted. Any of the keywords he puts in here, it makes them really easy for him to go through and find things. I remember a couple of weeks ago, you went and when you were a couple months ago, you showed us a profile and you put a keyword in, it only showed up in his skill section, but it didn't show up anywhere else in his profile. And you went, oh, well, does this guy really have this experience? So right. make sure those keywords are everywhere. Yep. Uh, all right, Jim asks, where is the more likely to respond button located? 
Well, that's only on Kurt's version. That's not on the version we get to see. Yeah, you don't get to see that. And there's nothing you can do. There's not, no button you can push. The only thing you can do is reply to messages that people send you. All right, uh, Vanessa asks, if your job title from your company is obscure, should you change the title to something more searchable? For example, my current job title is Senior Manager of Operations in the outside of, and in the outside world, I'd be considered a Senior Manager of Facilities. So what do you recommend when you have that obscure job title from your company? So you, so, so um, read the question again. Well, um, what is, what do you do if your job title from your company is obscure? Obscure. Okay. So I, I think the rule of thumb there is, is that, you know, you, you, you can, you can't do not ever lie on an application folks. So that is first rule of thumb. Do not ever lie on, a, on an application, but on your resume and on LinkedIn, again, I'm not asking or suggesting that you lie, but if you've got a title that's obscure, then again, DB would be a great one to ask this question too. But I think Jeff, the general rule would be if you wanna modify your title a little bit, then modify it, but maybe you put in parentheses what your actual title was um, or somewhere in that first bullet that you say as da 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 da, -da you, what you really did in that job. Um, because um, even though it may seem obscure to you, um, it's uh, it may be it may be more common than you think it is, and so don't throw the baby away with the bathwater. Um, don't 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 over don't overthink that title because we're not necessarily looking for titles. Um, yeah, if we're looking for a, a, a CMO, we're looking for directors and VPs that are ready to be a CMO, and we might be looking at CMOs too, depending on how many years of experience they've they've, they've got. But um, but don't throw the baby away with the bathwater on that one. Right. And as Susan said, I put both titles with a slash between them. And yep. I think that's fine because, you know, what if you're a customer service rep and you're applying for a customer relationship specialist? Exactly. It's the same exact job title. So list them both as your, you know, when put the first title, whatever the real title is, and then you can list the second title or third title if it would be the same thing. And always be sure to use the titles that LinkedIn uses. Because as you saw, when Kurt was putting in job titles, he was picking what was already in there. He didn't go try to create something different. So right. make sure you use those default job titles. Okay, that's it. Good. Okay, so so again, now we just continue as, as a recruiter, I just continue to build my funnel. And I look at these, these profiles really quickly. Whether you've got a picture, does it matter? No, but I recommend that you do. If you're in a job search, it's time to update your picture. You don't have to go spend a lot of money on, on, on a picture that you uh, have taken. You can do it with a, an Apple phone or have a friend or a, 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 a partner take that picture. But make sure it's an updated picture. Really silly, uh, but make sure it's just a picture of you. I can't tell you how many times there's, um, there's two people in the picture and um, and and it the name on it is Tracy. I don't know if it's the girl or the guy, right? So um, just make sure it's a picture of you. And 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 instead of where people don't put pictures in, I, I just highly recommend. Here's an example where I call the that that wreath around where this executive Carl has clearly identified that he is open to new opportunities. He's actively looking and he's telling everybody that by putting that wreath on. Where other people that have self-selected that they're open to work, they haven't put that wreath on. Here's a gal, Linda, that doesn't have the wreath on, but she's open to work as well, okay? Here's Linda, so you can see we're really clearly, she's given, her, given us her contact information. Um, so it's not because I'm connected to Linda, but in here, she has made her public, her contact information public. A game changer because I'm a recruiter. I told you I can look at 70 or 80 of these in, in, in an hour, my objective. And so <clears throat> let, me, let me tell you a little bit about a, a, a recruiter and how we approach a job is once we've gotten the order, once the company has, has made a decision that they're gonna use our services, 
Um, obviously, one of the next things is to learn more about the job. And by that time, we've probably reviewed the, re the, the brief. We've had probably an hour or two conversation with some of the executives about what they're looking for and what do they want this executive to accomplish. And we're taking notes on keywords throughout that process. But then what happens, and again, this is not necessarily my secret sauce. I don't know that Corn Ferry, you know, and, and those folks do it this exact way. But, but in general, the next two or three weeks a recruiter has is generally spent with their head down. And they're either, they've either got a big research team, if they're with Corn Ferry, that's working on looking for and identifying candidates, or if it's a boutique like myself, then I generally get involved and stay involved in the entire process, even through selecting candidates that I want to talk to. So for two weeks, that's all I do. So you can do the math, two or three weeks, you can do the math. I've got eight hours, 10 hours a day. Um, and I do do other things, but um, I've got quite a bit of time on my hands to really dig into the network and to try to turn the dirt as many times as I can to uncover as many candidates that I can. I start big in that funnel. I start big because um, it's just started. We just, we don't, we haven't even started to interview candidates. We're just trying to fill a funnel of candidates that we might have a conversation with. And then as we continue that, candidates start moving through the funnel. And, and so I want you to, every one of you on this call, I want you to try to be at the front of that funnel for every, can, every search that's going on that could be a, a potential fit for you. And I know I'm beating a dead horse, but it comes back to give us recruiters your contact information, phone number and email address in your summary section. It's a game changer and you will receive phone calls quicker, faster, um, than, than, than you have in the past because recruiters would much rather pick up the phone and talk to you or send you an email, an email than send an in-mail. We don't like to have to send in-mail. Questions? Yeah, a couple questions. One, uh, Robin says, so the wreath is not derogatory, making one look desperate. I hear that it could. Let me just so tell you my point about the wreath is probably... 50 to 70% of recruiters out there do not pay for the recruiting package. Uh, I know there's a firm here in Dallas, they have 30 recruiters working there and none of them pay for the recruiting package. They use basic LinkedIn. So how are they gonna find if you're interested in working without putting that reef on there? The other issue also is your friends who happen to be on LinkedIn may see your picture and go, oh, I didn't know you're out looking for work right now and reach out to you. So tell everybody, listen, it's not, you're not desperate. You're not the only person out looking for a job. There are millions of people out there looking right now. Even when times were good a year ago from now, when the economy was really booming, people were still looking for jobs and it's okay. Yep. So Absolutely. And, you know, and to add on to that, Jeff, I think that you, you're, you, you hit the nail on the head and you bring up a really good point. And, and that is, and this isn't what we spend time talking about on LinkedIn, but I'll divert just a little bit. And that is one of the tools that I, you know, recommend to candidates is they, they activate their network and they tell everybody that they know that they're actively looking for a J-O-B. When I was looking for a job, I would go to the grocery store every day. And I always went in peculiar hours where I wouldn't just see the guys that were coming home from the gro uh, work to go to the grocery store. I went during the day and I'd wait until the checkout lines were full and I'd get in line and I probably talked a little bit louder than other people saying, yeah, you know, this is really fun going to the grocery store every day. I meet so many new people looking for a job. And I generally came home with a business card or two from somebody that was, my husband's a recruiter or my husband's got a company and he might help you. And and, and when I went to meet people, I'd go 20 minutes earlier. Now we can't do that anymore, but I'd go to the bar 20 minutes earlier and I'd talk a little bit louder to the bartender in hopes that maybe somebody else might hear me. So there's a lot of things that you can do, but we, we one of the things that, that Jeff hit on was that a friend or somebody that you work for might be going through LinkedIn and, and you haven't shared with them yet that you're actively looking and they don't know that. They, don't, they haven't seen you in a couple of years that is a big visibility, a big, big view that, hey, this is somebody that I should probably reach out and talk to. But in addition to that, I want you all to think about activating your networks. And so when I talk about this, I'm going to use, I'm deviating here, Jeff, briefly, but I call it the prayer letter. And I want you all to think seriously about this. So 
Every one of you has got contacts that you've worked with, people you work for, companies that have called on you, people you've met at trade shows. I don't care if that list is 100 people or 400 people or or 90 people, 20 people. I want you to go out and build that list because your network is your net worth. I want you to develop a list with all their email addresses. And the first thing I want you to do is activate your network by reaching out to every one of those people and calling them or emailing them directly individually to say, hey, I want to schedule 15 minutes of time to talk about where I'm at in my career right now. You want to create conversations with that list as you can. Next thing you need to do is after you've done that, 30 days later, you got to remind that network you're still looking. And so what I suggest you use is a prayer letter. The prayer letter is something that I came up with a long time ago and I should have patented it, but maybe I'll write a book about it someday. It says this, you grab all those email addresses and you put them all into a BCC, no twos and no CCs. And the subject matter, it says great people, no great people. And in the body, it says, if you didn't know what I was up to these days, you never um, know that I was looking for help. I'm looking for a new opportunity and some of the target companies I'm looking at this month include, and you give them those target companies. Anybody that you know, feel free to forward this on to anybody you know And uh, if there's anything I can do for you or anybody in your network, don't ever hesitate to call. I'll be back in touch in 30 days. Have a blessed day. You need to send that note out every 30 days because once you activate your network and you've told those people that you're looking, if they don't hear from you in 30 days, they're going to assume. And we hate that word, especially in job search, because assume means that they've assumed that you found a new job. And we don't want that to happen. Instead, we want to be able to share with our network the when we got that job and how great it was and how much we appreciate everybody's help. So if you're not using the prayer letter, I know it's not LinkedIn oriented. If you're not using the prayer letter, highly recommend you use it. Everything's in the tape that Jeff just put together here. So you can go back and listen to what the email message says. But uh Um, highly, highly recommend that you leverage your network. And LinkedIn is a great place for you to do that. But make sure that for recruiters, you're making yourself really easy to find. Right. And uh, so Bill, you know, Bill says uh, in the about section, should you have your phone number as well as your email address? Yes to both. Make it easy. For those people who don't want to put their phone number out there, you can get a Google voice number and have that number roll over to your personal number. So uh, if you're interested, I mean, that way, everybody can have a phone number. You can publish that phone number, make it easy for people. Uh, Rusty asked specifically, how do you turn on the reef? I don't see that uh, on Linda's profile. So obviously she didn't turn on that feature. Right. Um, Let me see if I can find it. I can tell you. Oh, go ahead. So it's if you click on your picture where it says view profile and your view profile, your profile view comes up and then uh, right at the top uh, under your picture and under your name and your titles, there's a little box that says open to work with a pencil and you click on that and there's a bunch of uh, there's a bunch of options in there, but you uh, you can find the open to work wreath option in that little box kind of at the bottom left under your picture in the profile view. Thank you. Yeah, so once you've selected open to work, you have to then click on the option, you know, to let everybody put the add the reef on there. Uh, Let's see here. I think Patty's got a question for us. She's asking to be unmuted. Okay. Go Patty, do you have a question? I don't have a question. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, what's the difference between what's the difference on using Indeed and LinkedIn? Well, I would use both. If I, I mean, I, I, you know, Indeed is more of a job search engine um, than it is to. I guess you can post your resume there. I, I guess you, it's similar to that. I, I'm not. I'm not as familiar with Indeed. I, I have used it to search for candidates in the past but it's not a tool I use frequently. Um, so I'm not, I'm not as familiar with what they offer candidates as much as I know what they offer employers as far as searching for candidates. Uh, so I do have a question um, and it, it sort of, Jeff sort of is asking the same thing. Uh, if you don't have a current job, cause we're out looking right now, what should you put down for a current job? Or does that matter in, in your searching? 
Yeah, I, you know, I think that there's, I think there's so much vulnerability in the market right now, Jeff, that um, as I, as I screen for candidates, um, you know, I will tell you that pre-COVID, there were companies that I would be, that, I, that I'd engage with that would say, I would really prefer um, a passive candidate, somebody that's not actively looking versus somebody that's been unemployed for a while. But those times have changed so dramatically in such a period, short period of time. I've still conducted searches through the COVID, still conduct a lot of calls and with CEOs. And I'm not anybody has ever said to me, you know, I, I don't want anybody that's that's not worked through the COVID. I'm not hearing any of that. So um, I think that you can do one of two things. You can um, you can put um, if you're doing any kind of consulting, if there's any opportunity where you can say that you're currently doing something, um, then that's great. Um, and if you can't, then uh, then I and I would end my job. Um, at you know Pepsi uh, May 2020, and just leave it leave it at that, and not try to make up something that I'm doing. Okay. One of the other tips that I've heard about that is you know because to be an all star you have to have a current job. Is that list the job title that you're looking for in the name yep. of the company, put your phone number, and then list two or three bullet points of your major accomplishments underneath it, letting people knowing letting people know you're open to work. Yeah. And when you get a job, you can just delete that uh, entry. Yeah, that I, that's a great idea. I hadn't even thought of that. That's uh, it also adds you. You could add more of your uh, skills underneath that too, so it'll yeah. reinforce it. Skills, keywords, all that kind of good stuff on there. You'd have to be pretty specific as far as what you were looking for in that particular case. If you were um, if you were just a marketing director and interested in and in, and had the flexibility to work in multiple industries. You might be putting yourself into a little box, but um, but I'd have to think about that. I think that's a great way, though, to to maintain um, you know that you're current. Right. Uh, could, could you do us could do me a favor? And you, you didn't show that this time. Could you start a new search to show the all the people on LinkedIn, and then when you click yeah. on those that are active, and then yep. add those couple little filters, those that respond. Uh, I think it's really eye-opening to see. Yeah. So I'm going to just go to an advanced filter. Um, I'm. This is completely blank, so I haven't selected any any total candidates yet. Um, somebody shout out a title you want to search for. Well, first click on more likely to engage. That way we Got can it. see. So 730 it. million people, and as the see. Um, 47 million. 47 million people out of the 760 are more likely to engage. That's right. So everybody yeah. on this call, we up that number by 88. Right. <laughs> well, I've got past applicants in there. I really uh, should go to more likely to respond. So more likely to respond and are open to work, 53 million. Right. So it makes a big difference from 760 million people who are on LinkedIn. Yep. You know, set yourself out there for that. Exactly. Uh, and then said, you could and then you can just see how quickly if I just put in Dallas, how quickly that number starts to go down. Yep. yep. All right. Uh, somebody's looking for a senior service now developer. A senior service mail? Service now. I guess that must be a platform. Okay. Service now is one word. So Okay. I guess, yeah. You can just make it all one word, bump, bump that together. You don't need to put the Boolean search in, in between okay. there. Service now and, um, oh, service now is a software company, okay. So okay, so I could put it, I could actually go it up and put it in here. Yeah, senior developer, I guess. Okay, so I could go to um, companies and put in service now. There you go. 
Where is it? Oh, right here. Okay. Um, and then a software developer is what you wanted to look at? Uh, senior software, uh, where they go here? Uh, senior developer. Okay, so let's go back up to title. And can I look at any market? You wanna look around the country? Yeah, right now we can, we're all working remote so we can be anywhere. Okay, so what's the title again? I'm sorry. Uh, senior developer. No results. Now it might be because of this lithium or yeah, this here. That out so that. let's take that out and let's go back to service now. And now yeah. we got 599 uh, or 599 people. So um, here's a senior developer. She's with service now. Um, and guess what? That's the person who asked the question. She's on the call with us. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. So you came up number one. Yeah. Great. There we are, my friend. Alexis, you're right at the top. Um, here we've got her email address. So that's that's perfect. Thank you for giving us that. That, you know, if I was looking to connect with you, that would save me a lot of time in having to um, to go into uh, to sending you an email. So thank you very much. And I would just go into this experience and I would. I would beef these up tremendously and use the number of words that you can to, to expand on your keywords, um, Lexus. This, that would be my highly, highly, rec highly recommended is you beef that up because these, these keywords, I, so the one thing I don't recruit for, I don't do any IT recruiting and I don't do any law recruiting. I work for law firms. I've done a lot of work for law firms and done, um, uh, marketing executives, CFOs, uh, COOs, VPs of finance and so forth, but I don't do lawyers. But the reason I don't do IT is right here. Um, Lexus has clearly demonstrated, well, I, and I think, consider myself fairly technical and I understand a lot of these key words, but if you're an IT person, the technology and the words are changing by the minute. And so you have got to continue to update this list and make sure it's current. But this is again, and I'm not picking on you, Alexa, sorry, but this is again where she's got a lot of opportunity to expand on some of the things that she's done and the words and some of the projects she's worked on um, right here in, in that uh, experience section. So take advantage of that as well. It's an under, it's, you, it's, it's, it's un, unused territory, un, unused real estate. All right. No other questions so far. She responds, will do, thank you. Good. Um, well, again, LinkedIn is just an amazing, powerful tool. Um, and I don't want to, I didn't, you know, I, I don't, uh, I, it's, it's kind of like Zoom. Um, you know, these days I encourage you to know how to use Zoom and how to navigate um, and, and sharing the screen and, and muting people and, 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 and if you're not familiar with Zoom uh, or any of the platforms, they all are pretty similar. I encourage you to take the time to get on with a couple of friends and, and play around with it and test it. And let somebody be the driver, let somebody else take the, take the lead and manage the meeting and pass it around because um, companies today are looking for people that are, that are adapt to using and, and can use different technology. So highly recommend that. The other thing that I highly recommend is that every one of you, as you leave this call, start to think about an interview question that I'm, if you're not getting asked today, I, I, would, I would guess that you will be in the near future. And that is to tell me or talk to me, it's a behavioral question about what did you do and how did you keep your team, your employees, your organization, your family, how did you keep everybody intact and on the same page during the COVID? Um, this is where there are a lot of executive changes that are being made in the C-suite today because there are a lot of great leaders out there, a lot of great managers. But that doesn't mean that when people can't come to the office, they were equally as impactful. So there's a lot of executives that are sitting around the boardroom today that are talking about, you know, 
Jack is a great guy. He is, you know, he is, he has demonstrated he's, he's been successful in his career, but man, this COVID thing, it, it got beside him. I mean, his team is upside down. Everybody hates him. There's, there's uh, things aren't going well. The projects aren't getting done on time. We've got to move Jack aside and bring in somebody that's a better communicator and then can help build that camaraderie. So I don't care what job it is that you're interviewing for somewhere in the cycle, they're going to, companies are going to start asking you those kinds of questions. So I encourage you to take the time ahead of time and script the answer out to that question, write it out, think about it. Um, if you haven't worked through the whole COVID, then think about a time, even though it wasn't COVID, that was a similar COVID experience, an emergency that maybe happened in your company or something where you had to act like or manage like we are in a COVID situation and use that as an example. But that is one of the key things that executives are going to be looking for. And I just encourage you to be prepared for that question. So uh, Kurt, just want to sum up, tell us your top two tips. What do you want us to take away for today? Well, top two tips. Number one, get that contact information is in there and, and, and don't worry about people finding you that uh, or, or tracking you down that are, are bad guys and gals. It, it's, you can take it out after you've got a job. Secondly, um, Activate that network, y'all. Activate it and don't forget your network is your net worth. Great, Kurt, thank you very, very much. Great information. I hope everybody online has enjoyed this presentation. Uh, next week, our uh, presenter is gonna be Ruth Lipsky. She's gonna talk about special features for job seekers. So she'll be talking, we'll get into from how you can use your profile and looking at your profile or how do you use the search feature to go find possibilities. All right, I need everybody now to uh, raise their right hand, if you will. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Jeff Morse, promise to always send a personal note whenever I send a LinkedIn request to connect with anyone. This includes when I use my cell phone or my uh, computer. Thank you very much. So you're welcome to link in with us. Uh, Kurt's applauding, I'm sure you get lots of connection request as I do every day, but they don't tell me why we should connect. So tell me something, you're welcome to connect with us, uh, but send us a personal note why we should connect. Uh, just uh, as an FYI, if you're a military veteran, uh, LinkedIn will give you one year of a premium job seekers for military and veterans. Uh, the only prerequisite is that you have to include your military service has to be listed. Also, if you're thinking about trying to, what other jobs have the same kind of careers that are out there, I'm gonna put this in the chat window right now. Oops, do this for everybody. I'll put this link in here. Um, so you can go to this link uh, and you can, uh, it will allow you to, if you are a food service manager, what other roles can you use this with? It's mostly for lower level jobs, but it is something that's uh, pretty, uh, works pretty well to be able to uh, help you if you're trying to see what other kind of roles that you can handle. Uh, tomorrow, so uh, today was Tuesday, LinkedIn Tuesday. Tomorrow we'll be doing interviewing Wednesday. Every Wednesday we do an interview session at one o'clock. Uh, tomorrow is session number four, video interviewing. So if you're not up on video interviewing and know what you should and shouldn't be doing, join us tomorrow at one o'clock. On Thursday, we do an effective resume Thursday class every Thursday. It'll be top tip, uh, top resume tips you haven't heard before. And also every Thursday, we are giving away two one month licenses for jobscan.co. So they'll give you unlimited usage of comparing a job description to your resume to see how close it matches up, which would help with ATS systems. Uh, and that's every Thursday. This Friday at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group, uh, we're gonna talk about being a better brand. Last week we did part one and we had so much information. A lot of people wanted to see uh, the rest of the stuff we couldn't present. So we'll talk about that this Friday, uh, be a better brand part two at 9.30. If you haven't joined our LinkedIn groups, uh, there's the Career DFW LinkedIn group and the Career USA LinkedIn group. Uh, we have over 12,800 members in the Career DFW group. You do not have to live in the DFW group to be able to, uh, uh, I mean, you, you can be anywhere to join either of those groups. Uh, this session has been recorded. Uh, it will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and it will be on the Career USA YouTube channel later this afternoon. It takes a couple hours for uh, YouTube to be able to upload it. 
Uh, please follow us on Facebook. When you do, every time we go live, you'll get a little alert on your phone. And if you follow us on YouTube and subscribe to the YouTube channel, every time we post a new video, which we're doing every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you'll find about the latest uh, title that we've uploaded. Today happens to be our 186th workshop that we put on since COVID started, 186 workshops. Uh, on the YouTube channel, it looks something like this, uh, where you see the playlist button in green. Underneath, don't click on the video, but click on the words where it says view full playlist in red. And what will come up will be a list of all the different uh, 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 seminars that we've done and you can see all the topics and pick the one that you want to see and you'll be able, like I said, be able to see this one later this afternoon. Please note uh, Career DFW is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We have no full or part-time employees. Uh, Kurt's volunteer volunteers graciously out of his time to, to help you the job seeker because he knows that if he gives you the information to make it easy, that if he tells you these things that hopefully you'll make it easy for him to find you when he needs you in the future. Uh, everything I've done over the last 12, 13 years has been as a volunteer. I don't get paid to do this. This is what I do to give back to the community. Uh, we survive on donations. It helps pay for Zoom. It helps pay for the web, uh, the websites. It helps pay for the web hostings. Please consider when you land your next opportunity, when you get your next job, please consider making a donation so we can continue to do what we're doing. So thank you very much for joining us today. Kurt, once again, thank you very much. Thanks everybody for being with us. Uh, today was a record-breaking day. We had a over 100 people with us today. Thank you.